Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and me and he knows man and he knows this world and he has created and sent to you and me messengers from the time of Adam alayhi salam through to the last of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi 124,000 to each corner of the globe to teach man how to live in this life. When you and I learn in our madrasas, dinyat or fiqh, the laws that we consult our ulama regarding, these laws are not just whipped out of a codex from a legal manual that you and I are supposed to just obey like this. Yes, we have to follow the law, but each law has a meaning and a reason why it's there. Today we are in an age where we want to know. The prophets came down and taught man, this is the way you're supposed to live and why. Many of us have grown up being told, Paranuche, Karanuche, don't even ask, mate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand what we're doing so that we can give it that meaning and that life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Musa alayhi salam, he gave him a sharia. A sharia is a way of life to teach the people. After Musa alayhi salam, Allah sent down Isa alayhi salam and expanded on the sharia of Musa. Because the people were of a different age and a different time. So there were things that were added to the Sharia of Musa for the Christians. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the light of all creation onto this earth, the mercy of all mercies, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. <coughs> as the seal to this mission of prophethood and expanded the sharia of the previous prophets to give the ultimate sharia. So you and I, as members of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, have a great honor to be a member of this ummah, the nation of the final messenger, of the best and chief of mankind who has the ultimate sharia and way of life. Now, how do we look at this sharia? And how do we understand its meaning? First of all, in the Holy Quran, does Allah talk about meaning behind things? When we look at salah, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that aqimu salat Establish prayer. Elsewhere he says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. We hear this all the time, man. That indeed salah repels and kicks out wrongdoing and indecency in one's life. Now, for those, most of us, inshallah, all of us pray. Now, when we pray, do we see wrongdoing and indecency in our life? Some of us may still have wrongdoing and indecency in our life. Some of us, alhamdulillah, may have reached the stage whereby externally, in front of others, we do not have any more wrongdoing and indecency. However, internally, our thoughts, our traits, our habits, our tempers, our desires, this is all classified under wrongdoing and indecency. This means that our prayer needs refinement, needs understanding, needs to be improved. So Salah has a function. It is not just a form that we perform and it's done and dusted. When we look at fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, like we said yesterday says, 
Fasting has been prescribed for you just as it was to those before you. Why? So that you may attain taqwa. Taqwa is a shield. Taqwa is a state and a presence of God consciousness. When we look at khums or zakat or sadaqah, it is there, we do it. We feel good when we do it. Sawab maligu. But it's not just about the thawab. Thawab is like a reward and account you are building in a bank with Allah. We need to understand what this action is doing for me when I have the right presence and intention when doing this. Sadaqah, zakat, khums, all of this is there to remove miserliness from the human being. To remove a vice of bukhl and increase and affirm the virtue of generosity and open-handedness. Fasting isn't just to stay hungry, man, and thirsty. Yes, the, one of the most basic levels of the fast is that we remember those who are less fortunate, who fast day in, day out, not out of choice. But fasting has various grades beyond this that Allah wants to activate in the human being through this action. Hajj. Hajj is a crash course in self-refinement for the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you and I, we need some serious refinement. That's why He's made Hajj obligatory upon us once in our lifetime for those who can go. But Hajj is not just about doing these formal ritual actions. Why does Allah want us to go around this house seven times, man, in anti-clockwise direction? Why does Allah want you and me to walk between the stones of Safa and Marwa seven times? Why does Allah want you and me to throw these stones at this pillar? There has to be a meaning behind all this and a reason that Allah wants to effect in the human being. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays it down nicely when he talks about the action of dhibah, the slaughter, the qurban in hajj. Allah says, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهُ لُحُو لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهُ لُحُومَهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا Allah says, Allah doesn't want and doesn't take the flesh and the blood from this act that you've done. وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُوا تَقْوَى مِنْكُمْ But Allah takes the taqwa from this action. Taqwa is an internal state that needs to be generated when one understands the wisdom and the philosophy of this action. Like this, all of the actions of the divinely appointed Sharia of Allah have a wisdom. Today we question, because we are living in an age in a society where we are bombarded by what is against the Sharia, that we feel inferior in front of this, because this is what is prevalent. We question why we should wear a scarf. We question why we should have a beard. We question why we should do this, why we should do that. This is all old business mana. But Allah has made man the same from Adam's time till today. There's no difference, mate. We are the same model. We are just living in a different environment and different surroundings and conditions. The Sharia is like, if you imagine Deen, Islam. Again, I don't like to translate Deen as religion. Religion is a word that has come out from the church. Deen in Arabic literally means a way, a way for everything. Deen is like, if you imagine a circle, the circumference of this circle represents the Sharia, the laws, the boundary of our deen. 
The center of the circle represents the truth, the haqiqah, the reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of you who remember your mathematics, there's a radius from the circumference that reaches that center point. A path, a line that reaches the center. This is the spiritual path that one needs to walk to reach that reality. The truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this path is within the boundaries of the Sharia. The Sharia leads towards spiritual meanings. And we need to understand these. Today, you find people, as I mentioned yesterday, questioning the meaning of life now because of the heavy material societies that we live in. Now, what happens when somebody starts to look for answers? Where is the common port of call that they go to? Most of the time, you will find the person who starts looking for an answer now in life, be them from an atheist background or whatever, the first place they will, most people will go to is Buddhism. Why? Because people have a spiritual void in their life. And faiths like Buddhism exude spirituality. Why do people not come straight to Islam? Because there's a negative image portrayed in the media. Because Islam needs to be presented properly. Islam has the greatest wealth of spirituality and spiritual nourishment that mankind needs. But it's not out there, this is the problem. The teachings of the Prophets and the A'imma contain the most powerful spiritual tablets for mankind. People come to Islam by accident. Also, accident perceived. People come to Islam maybe because they meet somebody who got Nobody goes first to Islam. But we need to understand and present our deen in the best of ways. And in that, we need to understand it for ourselves first. So we cannot dance just around the circumference of our faith, of our deen. Imagine a huge garden, within the center there is a palace which contains the greatest treasures. But around this garden there is a fence. The fence is the boundary, this is the laws. By just sticking to the form of our religion, we are just hanging around at the fence. We have to understand the meaning and go into the garden and walk the path spiritually while staying in the boundary of the Sharia and following the laws and understanding what they should trigger off in you and me as human beings. This is Islam. It is complete. And Allah gives us signs everywhere. You pick up a fruit, a fruit that has a shell. When you open a fruit, you open to go to the S to the center. The kernel of the fruit is that which can generate more. It is the essence of the fruit. Not just the shell. So we need to awaken to the meaning of our deen, of our faith. We are told... That when the 12th Imam, Ajallallah Ta'ala Faraju Sharif comes, Yati, Yati, Kaannahu Yati, Bidinin Jadid. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wala said, When he comes, as if he will come with a new deen, people will see. That when he comes, they will think, what is this mana? Why? What deen will he bring that people will think it is new? First of all, what is the deen? In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fitrat Allah illati fatara nasa alayha. 
لا تبديل لخلق الله that the fitrah that Allah has created and deposited and engineered every single human being with this fitrah is that primordial nature that you and I have within us that directs us to Allah it is like a seed if you imagine a seed a seed contains all the information that that plant or that tree or that flower that it eventually becomes a seed doesn't need more information or education it just needs to be planted and when it grows it grows into that tree with all the branches and the leaves and the fruits there's no additional information in that seed needed the fitrah is like that seed that contains all the information you and I have to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within you. But it needs the right conditions to grow and flourish and blossom. Allah then says in the Quran, لا تبديل لخلق الله It is like that chip that Allah has planted in each one of us. Allah says there is no change in Allah's creation. Meaning what? Meaning there's no firmware upgrade to this chip. It is version 1.0. From the time of Adam till today, 2009. There's no 1.1 update. This is man. This is the fitrah. Then Allah says, لا تبديل لخلق الله ذلك الدين القيم. This is the worthy deen. This is the proper way, the way of the fitrah. To activate this fitrah, to plant, allow the seed that's in us to have the right fertile ground, not a barren ground. To have the right light for this seed to grow, the light of the teachings of the prophets and the a'imma and the Quran. To have rain, the rain of ibadah, of water, of tears in humility for Allah. Imam, when he comes, will bring back this way. But the problem is, is mankind will be so far away from the fitrah and the original way of man that it will seem like he's bringing something new. When what he actually is bringing back is the original way. The way of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The way of all the previous prophets. This is what the Imam will be bringing back. So the ones who walk the path of activating and getting in touch with that fitrah, they will not see this as a new deen. They will see this as, yes, this is the man. So it is upon us from now to walk the path of the fitrah, which is all activated and generated by following the sharia, and understanding the Sharia and what is supposed to activate and effect in you and me. We are fasting now. We have to understand what we are doing when we fast. This holy month of Ramadan is actually we are in the spiritual gymnasium. This is a 30 day training camp, training ground boot camp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we come out what do we come out with at the end of this month we celebrate what Eid Eid means what my brothers and sisters Eid literally means comes from Aud which means return a return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after training refining purifying building ourselves our spiritual muscles to become athletes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we return back to Allah on that day we come. Why do we celebrate and eat all this halwa and sale and all this business mana? And wear nice clothes and come to salah and say, 
Alhamdulillah, we say to Allah, you have, uh, you have made this day Eida. A return to you, Ya Allah. After our efforts in this holy month. So we are training ourselves to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after being really wretched. After being the way we say in Dua Iftitah every night, oh Allah, you love me and show me love, but I turn away with you with hate. Oh Allah, you run towards me, but I run away from you. So my brothers and sisters, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this understanding, to grant us the ability to train properly in this holy month. So that when that day of Eid comes, it is the best awd we have ever had to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the ultimate return for these negligent human beings that we are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the tawfiq to become men and women of the fitri way, to understand our deen so that when our Imam does come, we do not see his deen as something new. Inshallah, tomorrow we will begin by looking at the mechanics of this human being in order to understand what we are doing when we fast and act in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He accepts all our a'mal and ibadat and efforts in this holy month. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.